Hello, I am once again uh, hopelessly and horribly confused by a lecture, this time by Cardiac Physiology 1. Um, mo I, I, I think I understand the other, the other two objectives, um, the ones that are not uh, this one. So like, I, I get how to do the, uh, um, you know, how the, how the EDV, ESV stuff works, like the calculations, and I um, understand the Frank Starling stuff, but the describing the sequential changes in cardiac electricity and consequent cardiovascular process pressures during the cardiac cycle this is the one that gets me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and just draw a wiggers diagram uh, and i think that drawing one from scratch is going to help me figure it out and i'm recording myself doing it in case it helps anyone else um, but i will point out that there should be excellent videos on youtube already um, of people drawing wiggers diagrams and i think that uh yeah, that, that, that should be fine. But anyway, so this is, this is mostly for myself, but in case it helps anyone else, I am just recording it, just in case. So, okay, so how do we, how do, we, how do, we do this? So first, the first thing, I think the most basic thing at the bottom of every Wiggers diagram is usually the, um, the EKG. So I think that's probably a good place to start, right? So we'll start off with a little bit of flat line, then we'll draw ourselves a little P wave, and then a QRS. Okay, that's not that's not what QRS looks like. QRS. And then a big T wave. And then we'll repeat the thing just so that we can see two full cycles, because I think that will help as well. So small P wave. Okay, my P waves are too big, but small P wave. QRS. T. And then flatline. Okay. So there, we've got two cardiac cycles. Um, they're not symmetrical, whatever, um, but it'll be fine. Okay, so now the important thing is to understand what each of these humps are. It, so the first thing is the P wave. So the P wave is gonna be, ooh, I got an idea. We can turn all of this to a cool color like red because EKGs are like red, right? Um, or something. But anyway, so then what we can do is divide this up. So the P wave, what does the P wave stand for? The P wave, if you draw a line through the middle of the P wave, that's rough, that roughly corresponds to the beginning of P wave is atrial contraction. So the atria contracting where the P wave happens. Okay, so this is where atrial systole starts, okay, and then what else? What else do we know? QRS, QRS, the R part of the QRS is where the ventri ventricu ventricular systole starts, right? Because that's, that QRS is going to be like the electrical signal that tells the 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 ventricles to start contracting and the p wave is the electrical signal that tells the atria to start contracting so those two make enough sense cool now the question is what do we do about the rest okay so we've got that and then the last big thing is the t wave right so that's the other the other big wave here um and the T wave, the end of the T wave marks um, the beginning of, of, I think, the period of isovolumetric relaxation. What, what, what is the T wave? So instead of trying to memorize these things, let's just try to remember the basics, right? T wave is ventricular diastole. So this is when this, or ventricular repo repolarization, so this that represents like the ventricles like relaxing. So at the end of the T wave, that's when the ventricles are going to be relaxing. And over here, I think it's towards the end of the T wave is the landmark. But that's going to be when, when the ventricles relax, what are they going to do? They need to open and they need to open up their valves, um, the AV valves, so they can fill in stuff. Um, so that is going to be... I guess ventricular diastole um, starts here. So I ran out of space, so I'll, I'll mark it on the second one, but it's also true for this one. The This marks the beginning of ventricular 
diastole starts. So this is when, this is roughly when the ventricles start relaxing. Okay. Okay. So now we have to label each of these periods and specifically we have to find like where the valves open and close. So first thing is uh, aligning, the first step is to figure out like you draw, you draw your EKG, the P, Q, R, S, and T. So the, ah, that's the eraser. So the P, Q, Q, R, S, and T, right? So I guess if, uh, I guess if you haven't seen an EKG before, it might be helpful to write that out. Q, R, S, and T wave, the P, Q, R, S, and T waves. So that's step one. Step two, connect that to atrial systole, ventricular systole, and ventricular diastole. So like basically, do, what, what do the, each of those mean as far as the atria, atria or ventri ventricles relaxing or contracting? Then the third step is gonna be figuring out which one, um, how this relates to the valves. So when the ventricles, so let's start, let's start talking about ventricular systole. So when ventricular systole starts, when ventri the ventricular systole starts, we have, um, let's draw a little, let's draw a little cartoon heart, right? Um, wunderbar. So we have the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle, right? And, uh, okay, I just realized that this cartoon heart is gonna be a little bit inadequate for us. We're gonna need a little bit, a little bit more Okay, a little bit more. So specifically, let's let's look at the valves here. So initially, before ventricular systole starts, we have, you know, this valve is open. These these H eight these AV valves that we're pointing at are open, and then what happens is that this is going to be this is going to be contracting, right? So I'm just going to take a minute to copy paste this. It's a little tricky, but I think I remember how to, there we go. Okay, so we do that, but then what happens is, so when the ventricles contract, and I need the small eraser. Okay, so when the ventricles contract, you know, they're gonna be getting a little skinnier. They're gonna be forcing out the uh, blood from the ventricles, but, and we can draw that like so. I'm trying a really skinny heart because the ventricles are contracting, you know, they're moving inward. And when they do this, well, then that's going to be pushing against the flaps of these valves. So the valves, well, they're going to be moving as well. So that's going to force the val valves to close. The AV valves are going to close now. So we have the AV valve is going to get forced shut. And this AV valve is going to get forced shut. Why are they getting forced shut? Because the ventricles are squeezing, which is pushing the blood into the valves and then forcing them to close. Okay, so now those valves are closed. So what is it? So what, what do we know then? We know that when ventricular systole starts at this line here, when ventricular systole starts, this line also represents where the AV valves are going to close. So we'll mark that in blue. AV valves close. Okay, and so logically that means that a few, uh, soon after that, um, what's going to happen? Well, uh, if the ventricles keep contracting, um, the blood needs to go somewhere, right? So the blood it can't it can't be it can't get stuck in here forever. It's gonna it's gonna have to go out eventually. And if we if squeezing more only closes the AV valves more, eventually there's only one place for them to go. They can't go they can't go back through the AV valves anymore. The blood has to leave through the semilunar valves to the lungs or the, the go out of the ventricles. So the semilunar valves are going to open soon after here. So uh, roughly at the, I think it corresponds to, the, I think the end of the T, the S wave. It's a pretty small period here. 
So then that is going to be when the semilunar valves open. So if whenever one of the valves closes, the other set of valves is going to have to open soon afterward. All right, and we're going to see that again right here. So here, the ventricular systole, what is that? What does that line represent? It says ventricular diastole starts. So ventricular diastole starts when the semilunar valves that were just open finally close. So this represents the semilunar valves close. Why would the semilunar valves close during diastole? Now that's a good question. So the ventricles, right, they were squeezing and pushing blood out through the, the semilunar valves, right? Um, so I'm just gonna draw a single ventricle here, and here is a semilunar valve. So the semilunar valves are pointed this way, and as long as the ventricles are squeezing and forcing blood through, that valve is gonna stay open, right? But what if the ventricle stops squeezing? What if we reach ventricular diastole, right? Because that's what happens in this T wave. What does the T wave represent? Ventricular diastole or ventricular repolarization. So the ventricles are going to stop contracting. And when this, when this ventricle is, when the ventricular walls are not contracting anymore, then, you know, it's not going to be pushing the blood out through here. So instead, the blood's going to kind of get lazy and flow backwards um, through the, uh, from the aorta or uh, pulmonary, ar pulmonary artery back into the right left ventricles so when they do that that's going to push our valves closed so this so this this valve is going to move into instead of being like this it is now going to be oh come on it is not instead of being like here okay i don't know why undo like always takes me back to the very top I just want to undo, okay. But, okay, so this, this valve, so the blood is gonna push it from here into a state that's more like that. And same thing with this one, it's gonna push it and push this one more down until they are now closed. Okay, so we close the semilunar valves during, when diastole starts. When the ventricles relax, that's gonna close the semilunar valves. So remember, when the ventricle starts contracting, ventricular systole is going to open, sorry, close. Ventricular systole is going to close the AV valve, and ventricular diastole is going to close the semilunar valve. All right, so if you squeeze, when, when the ventricle starts squeezing, it's going to shut against, it's going to force the AV valve shut, and once when the ventricular when the ventricle stops squeezing, it's going to let the blood the blood's going to flow backward, which is going to close the semilunar valves. Okay, so the that means that the closing of the valves cors corresponds to the ventricles. Um, it's it's really driven by the ventricles uh, squeezing or stopping or, or relaxing. So that's that's what determines the squeezing of the valve. So let's let's draw this again, right? So we have um, oh actually that means that remember what we said before, right? So if the semilunar valves close. That means that at, soon after that, we have to have the AV valves open. AV valves must open, right? Because if the if if the vol if, the, if all the valves stay closed, then none of the um, then blood can't move anywhere, and the heart is a pump, so it has to. It, it can't leave all of the valves closed for very long, other, other with, uh, otherwise how is it gonna move blood? All right, so now let's look at the second cardiac cycle and go and add in those lines again. So here is H, so remember this is the P wave. P wave represents atrial depolarization. So that's atrial contraction. The atria don't really have anything to do with the valves because uh, I guess the valves are on either side of the ventricles and they don't, they don't really care about the atria. So don't have to draw any lines there. What about here, QRS? Okay, QRS complex, that is important because that is ventricle, ventricular repolarization. Ventricular repolarization means the ventricles contract. Ventricles contract, that's going to uh, close the AV valves, which, um, 
man, okay, I don't have space to label it, but um, that's going to be the AV valve closing. So this line is the same as this line. Those two lines are equivalent, just on two different like cycles of the um, cardiac cycle. So then what happens after the AV valves close? Well, that means that the semilunar valve is going to have to open soon after that. And then eventually at the end of the T wave over here, when ventric the ventricles start relaxing, that's going to force the semilunar valve to close, which again is the same as this line. And soon after that, we're going to have the AV valves opening again. So, um, all right, I'm wondering if I can like abbreviate this so that we have uh, labels for each of these. Uh, I think I could. So it'll be less clear, but it'll it'll work. So let's just remember, right, this is ventricular systole. So when ventricular systole starts, can I move the text out of the way? Eh, yeah, that's reasonable. That, that, that'll work. Okay, so when ventricular systole starts, that's going to A, B, close, semilunar open. Now the, then the semilunar closes and the AV opens. Same thing here. First peak of the QRS complex that represents the ventricles repolarizing, ventricles contract, ventricle contracts, pushes blood into the AV valve and forces it shut. AV closes. Soon after that, we have the, uh, the you know, right around where the S, uh, S wave is, um, we're gonna have, uh, we must have the semilunar open because, well, if the AVs are closed, well, the other valves have to open sooner or later. Um, and then after, when the ventricles finally relax, that's going to, ventricles relax, um, the blood is, they're not pushing the blood in the aorta anymore, so the aorta can backflow, which is going to close the semilunar valves, and then soon after that, the AV has to open, because again, the, part, the heart has to um, keep pumping blood. Okay, all right, so now we've got the lines labeled. We pretty much know what each of them mean, at least, uh, they're, at least the ones that like are related to valves. Cool. All right, so next... The next thing we can do, I guess, um, I guess the simplest one, once you have the valves, is the heart sounds, right? Heart sounds are very much related to the valves, so let's just draw one with the heart sounds. So the heart sounds are caused by turbulent flow, so uh, he didn't go over this in this lecture, but in Regent's notes it does talk about it, so um, I think that makes sense. So turbulent flow is what happens when the valves close, and that like messy turbulent flow is going to be like what creates the heart sounds. So basically, when valves close, that's the heart sound. So when is when is a valve closing? Oh, AV valve closes here. That's a heart sound. Semilunar valve closes here. That's another heart sound. AV closes here. One heart sound. Semilunar closes. That's another one. Okay. Now which one's which? Uh, so within the, within within they're numbered basically in the order that they show up in the cardiac cycle. So. The AV valve closing is S1, and the semilunar closing is S2. Just because if you start at the T wave, then the first one that shows up is uh, the AV valve closing, and then the second one that shows up is going to be the semilunar, uh, the semilunar valve closing. And I'll label these as well. Here, so here's another S1. This one's another S2. Okay. And then the other two heart sounds are more minor. Uh, I think he said that in general, they show up mostly in pathological circumstances, but um, I mean, so if you do, if you hear more, if you hear anything more than a lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, if you hear any third or fourth sounds, then that's gonna be um, indication that there's something wrong with the patient. Um, so it's important to be able to identify those. And let's see, where do those extra heart sounds go? Now, S3. What do I know about S3? S3 is going to be associated with the opening of the mitral valve, which is weird enough. But, uh, okay, mitral valve, when is that going to open? Mitral. That's the AV valve opening, right? So when does the AV open? That's right here. So I guess that'll be, like, right here. I'm going to pause and check if that's right, because that doesn't feel right.
Okay, so it turns out it is right. S3. So yeah, so I was just talking about where to put S3, and S3 is going to be you know right after the AV valve opens, so pretty much pretty soon after S2 here. Um, so if the, if the if there's a problem with the mitral valve, when the mitral valve, which is one of the atrioventricular valves, um, when that opens, that's going to cause uh, an extra sound right after S2. Okay, so that's S3. And then where's, what is S4? So S4 is if like you have hypertension, uh, then your atria, atrial kick is going to be like a little bit extra turbulent. It'll make a little extra noise. Um, this is because the blood pressure is so high. So when does the atrial kick happen, right? So where, where is it going to be on the graph wherever the atrial kick is? Where is the atrial kick? Um, well, you're going to have to depolarize the atria to tell them to contract, which is, what does that? The P wave does that. So right after the P wave is where you'd hear an S4. So right after the P wave is where you'd hear an S4. Okay, there we go. So there's all the, there's all the heart sounds. So eh, eh, it looks like S4 kind of technically happens before S1. And if we define the P wave as like the start of the cardiac cycle, but Oh well, it's a uh, it's it's a cycle. If you if you go in, if you start at S one, you could you can count one two three four, and it, it makes enough sense. Anyway, but yeah, so there's all the heart sounds. Cool. Next, pressures, right? Because that's that's what this that's what the objective says. The objective says that we have to be able to you know correlate the cardiac electricity to pressures. Okay, so let's let's get to the hard part. So. I think that these valves is really important to kind of figure out, like, um, basically connect the electricity to the pressure. That's that's how I make the connection, at least. Um, so that's that's what we're, so yeah, that's that's why I drew that first. But now let's get to the main part, which is the pressures. Okay, so the pressure. Um, how do which one do we want to start with? Okay, uh, let's see. So I guess the main one that we need is. Um, I guess the, first, the main one that he showed was atria, right? So there's the right there. There's a the pressure in the right atrium, left atrium, and also the venous system. So the jugular vein, or the superior vena cava, or the inferior vena cava. All of them are gonna follow roughly the same curve, and it's it's the one that has the A wave, the C wave, and the V wave. Foot. Okay, <laughs> that is not a great drawing, but. So let's let's see if we can basically t uh, figure out where where each of those waves uh, belongs within our graph here. So A wave. What is the A wave? The A wave is going to be the atrial um, contra at at atrial contraction, right? Or the atrial kick. So A waves. A stands for atrial kick. Makes enough sense. So where am I gonna? So where's the atrial kick happen again? When we ask the when we depolarize the atria with the P wave, and ask the atria to hey could you uh, contract a little bit? Then they will contract and they will kick some extra blood into the ventricles, and that's gonna be when our P wave happens. So I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw the P wave. Uh, I'm gonna draw the A. Sorry, that that's gonna be when the A wave happens. So I'm gonna draw the A wave as. You know, starting basically once the atrial kick, when the P wave starts. So uh, let's start here. So there's our A wave. Okay. And now what? So after the A after the A wave, um, um, after the atria have contracted a little bit, then what happens here? The atrioventricular, the AV valves close. How is that going to affect? the atria, right? So how's that going to affect the pressure in the atria? If these valves, there's the, there's, the atria, there's the atria that we're looking at, right? And it's it's also the same for the, the IVC and SVC, because remember the IVC and SVC are emptying into the atria. There's the superior vena cava here and the inferior vena cava. They're going to be, okay, I, I can't draw on that side of the screen. Apparently I've gone too far to the left, but um, the blood's gonna be coming in here, right? So the pressure in there is basically the same as the pressure on the atria because they're directly connected. Um, but in, in all of those, 
when the uh, when when these this valve closes, that's going to be increasing our pressure. Why? Uh, why? That's uh, why because you know all, uh, you know all, we used to have free flowing blood, and we let we let the blow blood kind of go wherever it wanted to. But when we um, closed it, then that's going to be like giving extra resistance to the blood, and that's going to be causing our C waves. So that's like the tricuspid bulge, or the mitral bulge, or the you know the the spike um, in the pressure. So actually, I'm going to redraw this a little bit. So let's go with an increase, and then it decreases a little bit, but then when we close the valves, that spikes it again. And so that spikes it again, and then it falls. So here's the A wave. This is the C wave. So that's the C wave is going to be the tricuspid um, bulge. So you see it's, it's bulge. And it, I think it's actually supposed to go higher than this A wave was, so let me fix that. Ah, no, don't erase everything. All of my hard work. Okay, so a little higher. You gotta drop a little lower. All right, so there's the C wave. Okay, and then the next step after that, what they call it is the X descent. So this is gonna be when the, uh, apparently this is the atrial relaxation that was the mnemonic that he provided in the slides anyway so a wave for atria c wave for cuspid x for relaxation okay so then this is the x descent so that's when the atria are relaxing um you know the pressure is going to be decreasing because they're relaxed and uh, they're, they're it's kind of because you know they just got done contracting over here to to get that extra atrial kick and now it's time for them to relax, so we have that X descent. And then slowly, uh, once the, once atria are done relaxing, it's slowly going to start de it's slowly going to start increasing again. I don't think that the this the the, the next peak is this actually associated with any particular, um, um, you know, any particular electrical events. I think it's, I'm, I'm like on on the, on the as far as the EKG goes, I think it just kind of happens like the blood just kind of fills into the atria passively, and as it does, um, as, as the blood flows into the atria, uh, fl as, as blood flows into the atrium, um, it's going to like press against the outsides and increase the pressure. Um, and you know, the, the AV valve is still closed, of course. So I guess it'll just increase the pressure until the AV valve's open. So we just kind of have passive increase in pressure until the AV valve's open. When does the AV valve open? There's that line, so that's that's why that that's why that line comes in handy for us. So, actually, and actually, I think I've drawn it too high. I don't think it goes quite as high as the A wave. This V one. So then it's just gonna increase until there. So the AV. This is so this is what we call the V wave, and then when the AV valves open, all of a sudden, um, we we start losing our pressure because it's gonna be flowing out. Yeah, the the blood's gonna be flowing out into the uh, the ventricles, um, and it's gonna keep go to, keep doing that pretty much until the next A wave. So when is the next A wave? Well, let's find the P. So that's the P wave on the EKG. It's gonna con uh, that's gonna that's gonna mean that the atria are contracting. So P wave on EKG. There we go. Let's try. I'm trying to get them like the same height ish, and so basically, that means that we can kind of just connect the dots here. It's gonna it's gonna be like a passive process, right? No, um, so this is the Y descent. So it's another descent, and it's just like the the blood's just like leaving the atria because we open the atrial valve. And so why does the uh, the we open the atrioventricular valve to let the blood out into the ventricles? All right, and then what happens here? Well, we we this is another A wave. Okay, so this A wave uh, is because the atria are going to be f uh, squeezing again. So pressure is not decreasing anymore. Pressure starts increasing when the atria start for like forcibly contracting, right? So if the atria are going to be contracting to really squeeze the blood out, and I guess the valves should be, you know, the valves are going to be open here. Um, Okay, I should I should just use a different I should use a new I should use a new model because this is 
trying to recycle the old one is not working. But yeah, so we have the atria. And if we have the atria and they're going to be squeezing, um, and oh, the valves are open. Ah! This. There we go. So if the valves are open and the atria can retract, what's that going to do? That's going. That's obviously going to increase the pressure, right? Because you know the atria are squeezing that blood, so this the, you know the pressure on that blood is going to be increasing. Um, but just to get a visual, I'm going to see if maybe I can try drawing it. I think that's what it would look like. Maybe theoretically. Is, do you think that's what it would look like if you squeezed the atria and they, you know, they forced all the blood into here, into the ventricles? Um, oh well, whatever. You get the point, hopefully. So, yeah, that's why we have the A wave, because the atria contract and the atrial pressure starts rising again. And then same thing as before, right? So, and then we have another C wave, where the these valves eventually close. The AV valves over here, they close and that's going to increase the pressure in the atria again. And then after the C wave, we have the opening of this, oh, sorry, uh, the opening of the, yeah, so after the, yeah, after the C wave, it's gonna be the opening of the semilunar valve. Wait, that has nothing to do with the atria. Um, <laughs> Right, so after after the C wave, the ventricles are no longer, uh, oh, the, when the semilunar valves uh, open, um, that's going to, basically what that is, is the atri the ventricles are now going to be, they're still gonna keep squeezing, right? So the ventricles started squeezing here, and they keep squeezing basically until, you know, they get repolarized by the T wave. Um, but initially, this squeezing here is going to cause the ventricles to force the blood like back towards the atria a little bit, which is increasing their pressure. But once the semilunar valve is open, then that's gonna be a lot better. Um, it's gonna let the blood leave through the semilunar valves and it's not, gonna be for it's not gonna be forced into the atria anymore. So the atrial pressure can decrease. And we have our X descent. And then again, <laughs> The it'll slow blood slowly pools in there until it reaches the makes the V wave, and then we have our slow Y descent when the AV valves open, letting out the blood. Okay, and yeah, so that's 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 the atrial pressure curve. Okay, that makes enough sense. So let's see if we can answer test questions with this, right? So. I remember his test, the, the, the example questions that he had were basically along the lines of um, what, you know, what electrical event is happening at each of these, at each of these points, right? So, uh, P wave, like, uh, so like A wave, what, uh, what electrical event would that correspond to? Okay, so that's going to be in between the P and QRS. Why does that make sense? Because A, the A wave is atrial kick, it should be right after the P wave. Um, and, you know, before the QRS complex kicks in. Okay, so I understand that. What about C? C wave is going to be the tricuspid bulge. Um, what causes tricuspid bulge? It's caused by the, you know, the uh, AV valve or the tricuspid valve closing, and then some blood's going to push against that. So the AV valve closes, and then some blood pushes against it. So there's the atria up here, the ventricles down here. And that blood pushing against this is going to increase the pressure in the atria. Okay, so the C wave should be right after the AV, AV valve closes. When does the AV valve close? Um, at the beginning of ventricular systole, when the ventricles start contracting, which is definitely QRS. Ah, not the eraser. Um, so at the beginning of QRS, there it is. Okay, so you know C wave is gonna be right there in the QRS complex, all right. And then what about the X descent? What electrical event is that gonna correspond to? Well, let's think about what the X descent is. It is the atria relaxing. When do the atria relax? I, like, I mean, I guess, you know, they, I guess they kind of start relaxing immediately after the, um, like during the C wave, but it doesn't count because of the tricuspid bulge. So basically the X wave is just gonna be after the C wave. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna remember. I'm gonna remember the X, 
the X wave, the X descent is right after the C wave. The C wave was during the QRS, so the X wave is just going to be, you know, during the ST segment between this S wave over, between the S wave right here and the T wave right here. That's when our X descent is going to be happening, initially, um, or at least the first half of that. Okay. So basically right after the S wave, once the ventricles have stopped forcing blood into the, you know, once, once the semilunar valve, op ah! once the semilunar valve opens and the ventricles stop forcing blood into the, uh, towards the atria and let it, let the blood go out and leave. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So X descent is after the semilunar valve opens and lets the blood stop bothering the atria. Next V wave. When is the, God dang it. What? <laughs> when is the V wave? The V wave is going to be, well, what is the V wave? It is just the passive filling of the atria. And because it's passive filling, you know, we don't have to, it's not like we have like a P wave or like any real electrical events really associated with it. Um, but the main thing that is associated with it is that the AV valve opening ends the V wave. Um, this, this V wave is gonna end when the AV valve opens because, well, then the atria, um, you know, that, le that lets blood out of the atria so you, c you can't really build pressure anymore after that. Um, so when, is, when do the AV valves open? It's gonna be right after uh, the AV valves are gonna open. Like that's, dur that's when you're filling up the uh, ventricles, right? So that when the ventricles are relaxed and filling up, when do the ventricles relax? T wave, end of the T wave. So the V wave of the atrial graph, atrial graph is going to correspond to the end of the T wave here. Okay. And what about Y? So the Y descent is going to be after V, obviously. Um, and what what is uh, so what electrical event is that going to be corresp uh, correspond to? Um, well, so it's going to be right after the AV valve opens, which is right after the end of the T wave, and until the P wave, right? Because what, what, what ends the Y descent? Um, the A wave, when the, the next A wave comes in and we have atrial kick. So basically from T to P is gonna be Y. So T for here to P is roughly corresponding to the Y wave. Um, okay, all right, I, I think that makes enough sense. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's, the one that, that's the only one that we need to know for this one. Uh, technically, I guess the air, I see the aortic pressure uh, on, on, yeah, I mean, if a full Wiggers diagram is going to have aortic pressure and stuff, but I don't think he went over that really here. I think it was mostly about the atrial pressure and connecting that to the events. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I think, um, I guess I'll just go make my cards now. Uh, oh wait, oh, wait one, one more thing. I, I, I do want to do the pressure volume loop and see if I can connect that here. So I'm, but I, I'm going to pause and see before that. Okay, so in part two of the lecture, I'm basically going to be talking about uh, how the pressure volume loop, the ventricular pressure volume loop connects to the EKG. Um, I will point out that there is there is a slide on, there's a, you know, there's a slide in the PowerPoint and um, it has all the parts labeled and you can just memorize that and be fine. But I like cardiology. Um, I think it's really interesting and really fun. Um, so I want to understand it better. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw it for myself. Uh, oh, another thing I will point out is that first aid, um, you know, like the book, um, the USMLE step review book, that one uh, has a really great page on like cardiac physiology explaining like basically all of today's lecture. So if you're confused by any of it, just hit that up and that should explain everything. Um, but anyway, for my own for my own purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the pressure volume diagram. So here's pressure volume. And there's that, and there's that. Okay. And then just kind of curve out the edges, increase there. And this one kind of does like a, like a that shape. Uh, I feel like it's not steep enough. It should be more like that shape. Oh, come on. More like that shape. Okay, screw it. I will take it at this point. But anyway, um, so there's the pressure volume curve. And um, yeah, smaller is good. So basically what we're going to do is... Um, 
Okay, so now we're going to see like how this connects to the EKG. Okay, so the first thing is the corners. The corners are really easy um, to identify. I think those that's like definitely the best place to start. So this corner is going to be, so first off, which way does, which way does the cycle go? It goes, what is that? Is that clock, counterclockwise? Counterclockwise, yes. So that's the way that the cycle goes. I think that's important. The first time I saw this graph, I thought it went the other way, and I was horribly confused. But anyway, so the graph goes counterclockwise. So what happens at each of these corners? Um, all right, well, let's, let's start at this one. This one is going to be where the ventricle, or the volume starts increasing, oh, the volume stops increasing, um, but pressure starts increasing. So what could possibly make the pressure inside the ventricles increase? Um, I don't know, maybe squeezing the ventricles. So that must be, this must be when ventricular um, systole begins. So this corner, this bottom right corner, must be when ventricular systole begins. And you know, from our last graph, what happens when ventricular systole starts? Uh, here it is. So ventricular systole starts is going to be this line here, which if you follow right, all the way up, that's going to be one of the valves. Can you guess which valve it is before I finish highlighting it? Um, no, I cannot because my brain has gone empty on me. Uh, it is the AV valve closing. Okay. So there, there it is. All right, so AV valve closing is when ventricular systole starts, right? So this is going to be the AV valve closes. And that's, you know, that's because when the ventricle squeezes, it's going to squeeze the AV valve shut so that we can't get backflow. And then it's going to squeeze the semilunar valves open so that we do get forward flow. So first thing is to stop backflow and then start forward flow. So actually, I'm going to just flip. Uh, I'm going to go back to stroke racer. Anyway. But this is, um, I think I've been using blue for the valves opening and closing, so I'll stick with that. So this is when the AV valves close, right? And then, so now we have an increase in pressure. You know, the ventricles are squeezing, they're squeezing, they're squeezing. Um, ventricles are squeezing until they finally force open the semilunar valve, and then the blood's going to leave, leave through there. And so that means that this top right corner must be the semilunar valve's opening. And all right, what does that make the what does make what does that make the top left? Well, obviously the semilunar valve closing. Um, but what's an, what's another way of thinking about it? Well, if this is where the pressure starts decreasing and the volume stops changing, so the volume stops changing, that means that we have to stop letting blood out which means we have to close the semilunar valve, right? Because the semilunar valve is how blood leaves the ventricles. So if you want to stop blood from leaving the ventricles, we have to close the semilunar valve. What about here? Well, that, you know, what happens after the semilunar valves close? The AV valves open, right? Like we, like we said, after any of the valves close, we have to open a valve so that blood can keep moving because the heart is a pump. Um, alternatively, another, what's another way of looking at it? Well, this is where the volume starts increasing in the ventricles, right? This is the ventricular volume. If the ventricular volume is going to be increasing, um, where does wh where does blood come into the ventricles from? Well, it comes from the atria through the atrioventricular valves. So we have to open that valve in order to start letting blood back into the ven uh, into the ventricles. Okay, so I think that like labeling those valves is really easy. The next thing is the heart sounds. The heart, remember, the heart sounds are associated with pretty with each of these valves pretty much closing. Um, so if the AV valve is closing, that causes turbulent flow, which right here is S1, and right here is S2. Okay, and what about S3 and S4? Um, so those, I don't like my S1, I think it's really messy. Um, but S3 and S4, right, let's think about that while I fix my S1. So the S3 is when the mitral valve opens, right? So a S3 happens when the mitral valve opens. Well, the mitral valve, that's one of the atrioventricular. Uh, so where, where does the atrioventricular valves open? Right here. So you'll hear S3 right after that. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller since it's a relatively minor sound. But that is S3. Another S4. S4 is the atrial kick. So atrial kick will happen um, as we're filling up the ventricle, right? Uh, so when we're trying to squeeze that last bit of volume 
into the ventricles, that's going to be the atrial kick. So you'll hear S4 right around here somewhere. Okay, so there we go. There's our four. There's the four heart sounds. And then finally, connecting this to the EKG. Um, well, we're using red for the EKG, so let's, let's think about each of those. So I guess the first thing is p figuring out where the P wave goes shouldn't be too hard because we just, we just talked about atrial kick, right? So the P wave is going to be triggering the atrial kick, so it must be like right here. And QRS complex is going to be what triggers the uh, ventricles to start contracting. And as we see from here to here, you know, the ventricles are really increasing their pressure, actually. It, it actually goes a little bit past that. Um, the ventricles are really squeezing to increase the pressure in there throughout the, you know, right side of this graph. So that must mean that QRS, the QRS complex must have been, oh, I have to zoom in. Okay, now that works. Okay, the QRS complex is going to be pretty much right here. When the, when the AV valve closes, that's going to be the QRS complex. So right along with S1. So QRS, it's, it's along there. Um, technically, I think it's like the AV valve closes um, roughly along, what's it, R? The peak of the R wave. I think that's what we said over on here. AV closes at the peak of the R wave. So the QRS, it's gonna be QRS. Yeah. You know, the QRS is gonna be occurring roughly around that corner. And then finally, what, when, does the, when does the T wave happen? Where is that gonna be? Well, that's gonna be when the ventricles start relaxing. When is the, when the ventricles gonna start relaxing? That's really gonna be, uh, I'd say, probably one that one, once the ventricular pressure starts decreasing, right? So if the ventricles are relaxing, the pressure in the ventricles should be decreasing because they're not squeezing anymore. So I'd say the T wave is probably gonna be somewhere around here. And I've drawn it upside down. Um, I guess I'll draw the T upside down too, just so it's like easy to understand what's going on. I don't know if that actually makes it easier or hard. I'm gonna fix the T then. Um, Anyway, but yeah, so there's the there's the T wave, um, and yeah, so PQRST. So that's that's where the um, events of the EKG are going to correlate to this um, this, this thing here. Now does, now, does that match what he has on the slide? Eh, it's close enough, I'd say. Yeah, it's close enough. That is, that is close enough. Yeah, uh, I guess the one thing that he pointed that he uh, uh, one additional thing that he points out is that first off, let me draw like a normal, like a normal EKG just like reference because I've broken it up into so many pieces here that it might be confusing. So there's P, Q, R, S, T, right? So that's that's what I've tried. I've just taken each of the pieces and draw, drawn them over here like where they happen on the, on the diagram. Um, but there is an, another interesting thing is that like around here, so if you before the before the P there was another T wave, right? Um, so over here there's this E phase, which uh, he calls early ventricular filling. I, I guess that's the fancy cardiology term for it. Um, but during early ventricular filling, uh, he used the green thing for it. I'm going to use green as well. So during early ventricular filling, when does when when is that? Where is that going to be? So that's, well, I mean, that's really not hard to find on the graph if you think about what it means. Early ventricular filling, uh, the ventricles are increasing the volume from here to here, and the first half of that is going to be, you know, this bit right here. So that's where early ventricular filling is. And then the A phase is like the atrial kick or the active ventricular filling, and that's, that's where the P wave is. So this would be the A phase, and the second half of that uh, so E and A are both along this line here. E is just the first half, A is the second half. Um, but yeah, that's, 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 okay. I feel like that, that makes a lot of sense now. I, I feel much better. Um, cool. I, that's everything for me. Uh, I guess, yeah, if y'all have any, if y'all have more questions, you know, feel free to reach, reach out to me on, uh, you know, group me or Discord. And um, of, of course, there's, like I said, there's lots of great resources for learning cardio on the internet. 
And you know, unlike, unlike with Embryo, I think that the internet resources will actually help this time. So yeah, that's everything. Um, on to the next lecture.